Hi everyone, we are doing word problems on equivalent ratio and we are just tackling tackling three questions that can be found in Visible Thinking page 124. Now before we start, let's go through some of the steps in solving ratio word problems. Now the first thing is asking yourself what are we comparing? Are we comparing cookies or muffins and all these things? And what is that ratio that is given? Okay. Now question two, what is given? What is the quantity that is given? And usually something is given and something is not given. So you need to identify that as well. Now the third thing is asking yourself which quantity remain unchanged. Okay, because usually uh, for this kind of word problems, one of the quantity remains unchanged. And so then is there a way to link uh, this quantity to what is given? The fourth thing you need to think about is if something remains unchanged, something else must change. So what quantity is that that changed and what caused it to change? Is it because I got something from somewhere else or is it because I gave something away or did we exchange it with one another? Okay, so usually these are the three types of scenarios. Now, as we go through the three questions, I want you to think what does the quantity 24 represent in each of the problem? Okay, because that helps you to solve the problem. Okay, so let's, let's look at problem one. Uh, Jay and Raymond bought some cookies in a ratio of 3 is to 5. After Raymond bought another 24 cookies, the ratio became 1 is to 2. So how many cookies did Jay buy? The first step is to find out what are we comparing. So we're comparing Jay and Raymond because Jay and Raymond bought some cookies in a ratio of 3 is to 5. So the first step is to write down J is to Raymond. All right, so these are what we're comparing, J and Raymond. And the ratio is 3 is to 5. Okay, so that's the first thing that I should write down. Now, the keyword here is after. So after Raymond bought another 24 cookies, the ratio became 1 is to 2. So something changed. All right, so this is my before ratio. And then after, something else happened. So after that, J is to Raymond becomes 1 is to 2. Okay, so I want to find out how many cookies did J buy. So that's the key here. Now then let's start thinking. Okay, so what changed? So what changed was Raymond because Raymond bought another 24 cookies. So this is what that is changed. Raymond bought another 24 cookies. Okay, now did J change? No, uh, so J is the one that was unchanged. Okay, so number of cookies that J has remains the same. Okay, so number of cookies that uh, J has remains the same. All right, so please take note. Okay, so now, so if J has the same, in before J has three units, after J has one unit. Now, can I make them the same because nothing changed? Yes, I can. Uh. So I can actually make J the same. And how do I get three here? I times 3. So if I times 3 on one side, I need to times 3 on the other side. That's what we know for equivalent ratio. So if I take 2 times 3, this will become 6. So before, Raymond had 5 units. After, Raymond had 6 units. So how many more units did he have? One more. And that corresponds to the number of cookies that he bought. So 1 unit will give me 24. So what do I want to find? I want to find J. So how many units does J have? J has 3 units, so 3 units is 3 times 24, which will give me 72. Okay, so that is how many cookies J bought. So the key here is Ray, J remained the same. Alright, now question 2. J and Raymond bought some cookies in a ratio of 3 is to 5. After J gave Raymond 24 cookies, the ratio became 1 is to 3. How many cookies did J buy? So let's use another color. Now first, let's find out what are we comparing. Again, we are comparing J is to Raymond. And what is the ratio? 3 is to 5. Okay. Now this time round, J gave Raymond 24 cookies. Okay. So this is key. Eh? J gave Raymond 24 cookies. So again, I have a before ratio because I have the word after here. I need an after ratio. So after J is to Raymond is 1 is to 3. Okay, now, here we need to ask ourselves what remains the same, what changed. Now both of them, their ratio should change because J will lose some cookies because J gave Raymond. So I will have cookies less, some cookies less, but Raymond will gain more cookies. So I will, J will have lesser cookies, Raymond will have more cookies. But what is the key here? 
if I give you, you give me, between the two of us, what happens? Yeah, the total no amount of cookies remains the same. Between you and me, if I give you, you give me, but both of us will still have the same amount of cookies. So this is where we actually find the total amount. Okay, so we're going to find the total amount. So I'm going to put there, I'm going to find the total number of units that both of them have. Right, so 3 is, and 5 will be 8 units, so the total amount will be 8 units. But after, if I compare the total, after I only have 4 units. So, but the total remains the same. So can I make this total the same? Yes, I can. What do I do? I times 2 to get 8. So if I times 2 here, I need to times 2 everywhere else. Okay, so 2 is to 6 is to 8. So now, let's compare. So J initially had 3 units, after that he had 2 units. So he lost 1 unit. Which makes sense because J gave Raymond 24 cookies. So J lost 1 unit. And Raymond initially had 5 units, now he has 6 units, he gained 1 unit. So that very obviously tells me that 1 unit is 24 cookies. So how many cookies did J buy? Now so when J bought, that is the before part. So before was 3 units. So 3 units, again it's 72. Last question. J bought some cookies and muffins on the ratio 3 is to 5. After J ate 24 cookies, the ratio became 1 is to 2. How many cookies did J buy? So first thing, what are we comparing? So now we are not comparing J and Raymond, but we are comparing cookies and muffins. So cookies and muffins in the ratio 3 is to 5. Okay, now, so again, I have an after. So let me do a before ratio. Let's do an after ratio. Okay, so after cookies and muffins is 1 is to 2. All right, now, so J ate 24 cookies. Did he eat any muffins? No, right? So what remains the same? My muffin remains the same. Correct? So my muffin remains the same because the cookies is the one that should be dropping now so look here I have 2 I have 5 how do I make them the same can 2 become 5 no right so I need to actually multiply both so I can take 5 times 2 so if I times 2 on one side I need times 2 on the other side this becomes 6 is to 10 okay I can do the same, I do times 5 here, so I times 5 here, this becomes 5 is to 10. So now my muffin is the same, you see, both are 10 units. So now I can compare my cookies, because my cookies is the one that is changing. So let's look, cookies initially is 6, now it's 5, so I lost 1 unit. So what does that 1 unit represent? Yeah, the one that he ate, 24. Now I'm looking for the number of cookies that he bought. So where is it? When he bought, it is the before part. Okay? So do I use this or do I use the one that I'm the equivalent ratio? Yeah, I should be using the one because I've already changed this and I'm using this to compare 6 and 5. I'm using this to find out that one unit is 24. Okay, so I should find 6 units, which is 24 times uh, 6. That will give me 144. So the key here is number of muffin remains the same. Okay, now I hope you've understood the three problems and let's go and try and practice on our own.